One day, when I got my money up, I was sitting in cheesecake. Inspiration hits you in crazy places. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Rib Shack. I'm very excited to have you all here, to be here, showing you what I'm gonna be making today. Cause it's a good one, it's a special one. We're gonna be making carnitas egg rolls. You heard me right, okay? We're channeling cheesecake vibes, okay? Cheesecake factory vibes. I'm gonna be braising my own carnitas. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. My take, my recipe on it, with a nice Salvadorian slaw in there. We're just gonna have some jalapenos, some cabbage, some carrot, oregano. Roll that up with some, some tender, juicy carnitas, some cheese. I'm gonna do a homemade salsa verde to dip it with, and a little side of sour cream, all right? If this sounds good, you don't even see it. But if you want more recipes like that, you know what to do. You better get down there and like and subscribe and thumbs up. Just press it all day. Undo it and do it again and undo it and do it again, okay? Let's get into it. You know what I'm saying? I got some pork in the fridge that I marinated yesterday, actually. So I'm gonna show you guys how I did that, all right? It'd be a montage moment. Take it back to the 80s. Today, I'm gonna be reading for carnitas and cheese egg rolls with homemade salsa verde. What you're gonna need for the pork marinade, you're gonna need pork butt or shoulder cut into big chunks. You're gonna need some garlic salt, some kosher salt, onion powder, you're gonna need some dry oregano, you're gonna need some garlic, the juice of one orange. We're gonna put that in a Ziploc bag. We're gonna seal the bag, making sure we take all the air out of it. No air. How am I supposed to be with no air? And then we sit it in the fridge for six to 24 hours. <laughs> okay, so I got this pork right here, marinated and ready to go. Got my Dutch oven preheating right now. And it's time to make carnitas. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do when we're making this carnitas to add the oil. Oh yeah. Cause we're gonna to wanna to sear this. We're gonna to wanna to get some nice color on there. You don't want pale pork. So once that's nice and preheated, you can smell this too. Well, you can't smell it. I can smell it. And it smells crazy. It smells like that dope, that good stuff. Let that get a nice sear on it. It'll take like two, two to three minutes. I'm just gonna do it in batches, you know? Don't overcrowd, so it'll start steaming. And we don't want that. Oh yeah, that's what we want. Look at this. That's what we want. Now carnitas, right? There are multiple ways to cook it. Like some recipes, people like braise it in milk. Some people do straight lard. Some people do a mixture of like a little bit of fat and a little bit of like stock, which is what I'm doing. Some people put uh, Coke in it. Some people put orange soda in it. I'm doing Sprite. I love Sprite. Some people put a, 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 a chote or a natto seed in there to make it red. I leave, uh, growing up, my mom would put sasson in it that has that. So to each its own, all right? We got that nice and crispy and sear. We're gonna sit that there. And it's on to the next one. And this is just a developing flavor there. Got some, some soda, some lemon lime soda, just some generic stuff. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Look at that there, boy. Let's save some for me. Look at that. It's all coming up. And it's going to give it a nice, deep, dark color. Now we're going to add chicken stock. Add some orange zest. This onion. I'm adding the pork back in, snuggling it in. But look at that. It's looking dark. Looking good. Look at that. The meat juices and fat. Add that in there too. And then just gonna add two bay leaves. Oh, I ain't gonna wanna put that to low, medium, medium low. Leave the top on, let us do its thing. Now that this is cooking, uh, we're gonna start on the other two things. We're gonna get this slaw ready and we're gonna get the salsa verde ready. Okay? Stay tuned. For the slaw, we're gonna wanna slice the cabbage very thinly. We're gonna wanna bring up some water to a boil. 
and we're gonna pour that boiling water over the cabbage and let it sit about 30 seconds to a minute and then drain it. Run it under some cool water, let it cool down. And then we're gonna squeeze as much water from it as we can. We're gonna take our carrot, we're gonna grate it. Then we're gonna add that to the bowl. We're gonna add the jalapenos and the red onion. We're gonna add our apple cider vinegar. Add a little salt. We're gonna add our oregano. We're gonna give that a nice big mix, make sure everything is evenly incorporated. We're gonna put that in a mason jar, sit that in your fridge for at least an hour. Trust me, it's gonna be, mwah, put that on anything. It's gonna be good stuff. I was inspired to, this, to do this dish by uh, a friend of mine, a very good friend of mine named Brian Chinchilla. He's the reason I actually got into cooking. You guys don't even know that much about me. I was a janitor for a while. Okay, cleaning Columbia University and Time Warner Building. 16, 17 years old, working with 45 year old men. Sucked. Get home on the train at 5 a.m. Go home and sleep. It's very bad stuff. From that, I went on from dish. I went to dishwashing all over New York. I worked at this place called Taqueria Diana. I met my friend Ryan Chinchilla there. He was the sous chef. Cool dude, young, sexy Hispanic man with a goatee and an afro. Just a cool dude, bro. Like to play around with the oregano. You know what I'm saying? He used to help me take the trash out. Let me like do little small prep projects around the kitchen. And, and pretty much put me on the, to, to cooking. I thought you needed like a education or something like a, a degree to start cooking but he was like nah dude you can make some money people will, like teach you how to do something he just put me on game you know he got me my first kitchen job at brooklyn fair the rest is history but fast forward now this is like 2016 17. he calls me up we're keeping in contact i'm just working in kitchens meeting all these wonderful people and he just calls me up he's like yo i'm about to open a restaurant in san francisco and i would love for you to be my sous chef and I was like, that is crazy. I didn't have too much going on at the time in New York. So I was like, you know what? Let me just get a ticket and get out of here, skip town. And the crazy thing is I had, it was, I had 300 bucks for my name. That's it, no bank account, a suitcase, and one pair of shoes. I just got on a plane and did it. He was the only person I knew out there. And uh, they set me up, they set me up really good. And uh, we did carnitas tacos with salsa verde. We grew the pig. We raised, raised carnitas. We uh, we made the tacos. We made the salsa. We did everything in house there. So this is uh, that's the inspiration for this dish. And a little bit of cheesecake factor, right? Everyone is indulged in the cheeseburger egg rolls, okay? So I was just in my crib one day, like, yo, I've never seen carnitas and an egg roll when I was talking to chinchilla. And yeah, that's the inspiration for this. Now we're moving on to the salsa verde. It sounds good just from reading it. So first thing we're gonna do with the tomatillos is we're gonna half those and we're gonna place those into a food processor with a little bit of olive oil, the garlic, and the avocado. And we're gonna pulse that until it's nice and smooth. Just keep pressing that button until it's smooth. And then we're gonna pour that into a mixing bowl. And we're gonna add the chopped onion, chopped up cilantro, the zest and juice of lime, garlic salt, onion powder, salt to taste, you gotta be in there tasting with your spoons. And then we're gonna place that in the fridge when we're done and let that chill. It gets better with age. All right, so the carnitas are done. We're gonna let that cool. But now we're gonna have to preheat this oil to 350, 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Ooh, child. Look at that. Ooh. Ready to go, shreddy ready. We're gonna take this out of the juice so it can start to cool down a little bit faster. Save the juice, hold on to it, okay? You got the juice now. Uh, that was a very bad joke. Now right, we're gonna strain this bad boy. Look, boop, it's in my hand. And I'm gonna strain it. Ooh. Look at all that meat. Look at all that there. And we're gonna pick out the orange pills. We're gonna pick out all the, all the good, all the good things. Get that. Perfect. So we got juice. Save that. I'm just gonna put it back on the stove. 
And there you got it. There you have it. We got the pork. We're gonna let this cool slightly, get some gloves on and start picking it apart. But I lied, it's a TV show. So I'm gonna double up with my gloves and get, get picking ASAP, no Rocky. Now we're just gonna start picking this, okay? Take some, you know what? I think I'm gonna keep the onions in there. I'm just gonna mush it up. I think it'll be good. I'm gonna take all this little orange out though. Orange kind of like disintegrated a little bit. And while I'm picking this, guys, be sure to like and subscribe to Food52. Also check me out on Instagram, Nappy Fried Chicken, Two Eyes in the Fry. It's like pretty much there, honestly. Check, well, I'll take some of this fat out. Bay leaf. But it's like perfect. And it smells so good. It smells so good. This is a very comforting, comforting meal for me. Egg rolls. When I was in New York, you get egg roll for a dollar. You open up the little duck sauce packet, you pour it in there. You want to get crazy, you pour a little duck uh, soy sauce in there. Excuse me. It's a dish that makes my turtles curl, okay? My toes curl when I'm in bed eating it. Because, yeah, I eat my egg rolls in bed, okay? Sometimes I'm laying on the couch. And it's something easy to make. You know, I never see people make egg rolls at their, at their house, and they should be doing that because it's delicious. And this one is probably the best egg roll dish ever made. Now it's time to assemble some egg rolls. We have everything ready and good to go. We got some cheese right here. I have a little sh shredded blend, a little Mexican shredded blend. I have the slaw. I got the pork. I got my egg roll wrappers right here. Nice clean surface, no wetness. And I got my warm water right here. A little resting spot. So we're gonna get to it. So first things first, I like to start with cheese. Measurements will be on Food52's website if you're interested in that. It's the whole point you're here. It's so go on Food52's website. But you can, you can do as fat or as small as you want, honestly. So I like to start with a little bit of cheese like that. Then I like to do pork. This is nice and shredded. Boop, boop. But I'm envisioning this as like little appetizers, you know what I'm saying? Little, little, little football game, little get together type of vibe. Got some slaw in there. And look at the colors. Oh, oh my God. Then you want to get your fingers, a little dip. And you're just going to want to run your fingers around the edges. Make sure it's nice and wet so we can seal it. Okay. Ooh, ooh, that's nice. And then what you're going to want to do is turn it diagonally. What I like to do is go here here, and then these two sides, I just like to tuck down a little bit, tuck down, bring this side over, and then imagine this is a big backwood. Then you just go and you seal it. And you got a little egg roll, cute little diaper. And then we'll sit this here. And you do that until so somebody come and get you and tell you to, <laughs> tell you to stop. Okay. So now we're gonna start frying these. We're gonna be relatively quick. Everything inside is cooked. We just wanna melt that cheese, get it warm, and get this crispy. Two to three minutes should be fine. Throw some in here. And doing batches, Depending on how big your uh, pot is, I'm gonna be doing three at a time. And for these, you want them to get crispy on one side and then flip them over. Might have to hold them down. That's fine. Try not to prod them too much before they get crispy. They'll get a hole in it. Oh, it's looking pretty, pretty nice there, almost. Uh. A nice red wine, probably, or any anything, anything. Honestly, but this that's the best thing about this dish. It just goes with anything, with any drink, any occasion. You know, probably music. I would go with Al B from uh, Edwin uh, McCain. I think his name is. Great song, great wedding song, great song for egg rolls. I was listening to it in the car yesterday. I was like, this is a banger. And that, you know, he's loyal. He shows up. He said, I'll be there. Um, 
All right, these are looking good to me. Look at this, ooh. Nice and crispy. I just wanna drain that. Just sit that. You're gonna wanna sit it on something that has, uh, that's a little bit lifted, so you get nice air flow, they stay crispy. Look at that. All right, so we just finished frying these egg rolls and they looking GBD, golden brown and delicious, all right? Hot, a little hot, but that's good. Toasty. We got some sauces right here. We got this salsa verde ready to go. We got some sour cream, these beautiful dishes, okay? I'm gonna cut these. I like to cut these on a bias so I can stack them. So that's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start cutting these. Give you guys a little peek. All right, and this is what we're working with right here. Same vibes as the egg roll. You can really smell the the the, the slaw in there. Ooh, good job. Perfect. I'm just gonna sit these up on it. Let's keep cutting. We made it to the finish line, the victory lap. And these are just looking good. This is just like a regular egg roll, right? Now we're gonna, we're gonna taste, taste these bad boys. So I think I'll do a taste by itself with no sauce, no nothing. Carnitas egg roll. Very good. I might have to hit the treadmill after this, but it's really good. Fatty. We got a nice, nice little brightness from that slaw in there, okay? A little cheese in the background, okay? We love that. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of this salsa verde on top, though. That's dynamite. That's dynamite, right? That's dynamite right there. Very good. Bright. Futuristic. Very futuristic. Ingenious, I would say. Mm -mm -mm. Now guys, if you wanna see more futuristic recipes like this, I'm gonna need you to do these things again. I'm gonna need you to like, I'm gonna need you to subscribe, and I'm gonna need you to comment down below. Social, social media, I'm on Instagram. The Happy Fried Chicken, two eyes and a fry. And I'll see you on the next episode. Thank you guys for coming to the Rib Shack. Appreciate it. I don't know if I got the part, but there you go.